Hi everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be making an eyeglass case. So, let's get started. First, let's take a look at the pouch. It's made with 100% cotton quilting fabric for both the exterior and the interior. It has a continuous zipper on it, and I did make it with a zipper tab at the end. I used any soft and stable to give it some nice padding. You can also use Palon Flex Foam. The case is also completely finished on the inside. There are no raw seams or bindings on the interior of the pouch. The case is approximately seven and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. We can open it up and put a pair of glasses in here and they'll be nice and secure with the padding. Now it's also good for some other items. I have some crochet hooks here and they fit in there very nicely. You can also use this as a pencil case. So I do have some pens here. You can see that they also fit in there very well. Now if you have some craft markers that you want to use, it's actually not long enough, but you can make this longer. So here's some Tombow markers and you can see that it's not quite long enough. Now I am not going to give you a pattern for this, but I am going to show you how to make it without the pattern. It's very easy and if you did want to put something like your Tombow markers in there, you would just make this a little bit longer and we'll talk about that. Let's go over everything that you'll need to make the eyeglass case. I'm using 100% cotton quilting fabric for both my exterior and my interior. Each piece of fabric is 9 inches high by 9 inches wide. Then I have a zipper tab here that's 2 inches high by 1 and a quarter inches wide. I'll be using Annie Soft and Stable for my foam interfacing. And you want that piece also to be 9 inches wide by 9 inches high. Then I'm going to use some temporary adhesive spray to adhere my exterior to my foam to do my quilting. Now if you prefer, you can use a fusible foam. I would use a one-sided fusible foam if you're going to do that. I personally do not like fusible foam. I prefer to use the temporary adhesive spray. If you're using the 505 temporary adhesive spray, you want to make sure that you read all the warnings on the back of the can and always use this in a well-ventilated area. Then you're going to need a number five zipper. This is a YKK zipper. I find that this particular zipper works really well for this project. The one that I have here is 25 inches long, but we're only going to use half of it. So you're going to take the zipper and separate it. And then you'll have one half to use in this project and one half to use in another project. And along with that, you're going to need a zipper pull. I'm going to be using some general all-purpose sewing thread. This is some Aurifil cotton thread. And then I'll be using this Creative Grids ruler. It's called the Creative Grids Non-Slip Multi-Size Curved Corner Ruler. And it has three different curved corners on it. So this one here is a two inch curved corner. This one here is a one and a half inch curved corner. And then this one here is a three inch curved corner. I'm going to be using the two inch corner in this project. If you don't have this ruler or don't want to purchase one, you can print out a circle that has a two inch radius and use that instead of the template. It's helpful to have some double sided adhesive tape here. This one is an eighth of an inch wide and you can use that to help secure your zipper in place as you sew it in. I'm also going to be using some Wonder Clips, which is what I prefer. If you prefer, you can just use some straight pins. Then you're going to need some marking tools. I will be using a friction pen for demonstration purposes only. If you decide to use a friction pen, be very careful where you use this because while the marks will disappear with heat, they can come back with cold. I like to use a chalk marking wheel to mark my quilting lines. And it's helpful to have a seam ripper and hope that you never have to use it. You also want to have a point turner. This is my favorite one. It's from Clover. And then it's also helpful to have a stiletto to use when you're sewing in the zipper. I can't find my stiletto, so I'm just going to use this pair of tweezers here. 
Then you'll want to have a rotary cutter along with a cutting mat and a gridded ruler. Then I will be using some hand sewing needles to sew up the opening that I use to turn the pouch right side out. I have my foam interfacing here and I've already sprayed it with the 505 spray. Again, make sure that you use it in a well ventilated area and read all the cautions on the back of the can. Then you're just going to place the exterior fabric on top of the foam and just press it down. It should stick down very nicely. Next, I want to mark some diagonal lines for my quilting. So I'm just going to take my gridded ruler. I have a 45 degree line right here. So if I place that right on the edge, that will give me the 45 degree line that I want for my quilting. And then I'll just mark it with my chalk wheel. And then I'm just going to mark lines one inch apart. Now, if you prefer to use a quilting guide for this, you can do that and you don't have to mark all the lines. But this is a small project and I prefer to mark all of my lines. Now that I have all my lines marked in place, we can go over to the sewing machine and do the quilting. I'm sewing on the Juki DX4000 QVP, which is also known as the Kokochi. This machine does have a built-in walking foot, which I already have engaged. Now I'm going to be sewing with a stitch length of 3.0, and I'm going to be starting on the middle line here. When you're quilting, you always want to quilt in the same direction. So if I'm starting up here at this end, I'm going to start each line up here at this end. And then I'm just going to follow those quilting lines. You don't need to backstitch right now. And now that I finished quilting that first line, I'm going to move all the way back up to the top here and start again at the next line. And then you're just going to go ahead and repeat that same process for sewing each line down. Now that I have all my quilting lines sewn into place, I want to trim this square down to be 8 inches square. So 8 inches wide by 8 inches high. If you remember, we started out with a 9 inch square. The reason why I'm resizing it now is because as we do the quilting, sometimes things tend to shrink down a little bit. I'm also going to take my 9 inch interior square and I'm going to put it on the back of the exterior. Just try and line up all of your edges. Now again, the reason why I didn't start out with an 8 inch interior square is because I like to cut everything together to the true size at the same time. That ensures me that everything is going to fit together properly because everything is the exact same size. I'd like to say a couple of things about using a rotary cutter to resize your piece. I have two cutters here. One is a 28 millimeter and this one is a 45 millimeter. I find that because of the foam interfacing, it's easier to cut with a rotary cutter that has a wider diameter. So I'm going to use the 45 millimeter one to cut this piece to size. The second thing is you never want to use a dull blade. When your blade is dull, you're fighting with it more to cut through the fabric and because of the extra pressure that you're applying to the rotary cutter, that gives you more of a chance to slip and cut yourself. The third thing is you always want to be cutting away from yourself, never towards yourself. So let's go ahead and resize this piece. First thing I'll do is line up my ruler. and then I'll make my first cut. Then I'm going to turn it around and line that cut edge up with a line on my mat on this side. And then I'll once again line up my ruler so that I'm at an 8 inch mark here. I'm cutting 8 inches away from this first edge that I cut and once again, I go away from myself. 
Now I'm going to turn it so that this cut edge is on a line here. I want to make sure that that cut edge is lined up with the line on my grid. And then I'll once again line up my ruler and cut away from myself. Then to make the last mark, I'm going to flip it again. I want to make sure that this cut edge is in line with a line on my mat here on the bottom and also on the side. Then I can line up my ruler for the last time and make the cut. Now my square should measure 8 inches by 8 inches and it does. Now I don't want to remove the interior from the back. I want to keep it on there. But I do want to make my rounded corners and I'm going to cut all of those at the same time. So I'm going to take the Creative Grids ruler and this is my 2 inch side, my 2 inch rounded side. You just want to line it up with the edge of the eyeglass case. And then you can go ahead and cut this out with your rotary cutter. Now if you're using a circle template that you've printed out, just go ahead and trace the, the circle onto the edge of your piece here. And now I'm going to cut the other side. Now that you've cut everything to size, go ahead and remove the interior piece. And we need to secure down all of this stitching. The way I like to do it is sew all around the perimeter of the piece with a triple zigzag stitch. You can also use a regular zigzag stitch or a serger. If you don't have access to a machine that does a zigzag type stitch, what you want to do is sew very close to the edge with a very tight stitch, like maybe a 2.0 or a 2.5. You will stitch all around the perimeter to secure in the stitching. Then sew in again about another eighth of an inch all the way around. Sewing around the perimeter of this piece is going to do two things for you. First, it's going to secure all of that stitching in place. Second, it's going to compress the edges of the perimeter, which makes it much easier to put in your zipper. I'm all set to do my triple zigzag. I'm using a width of 5.0 and a stitch length of 1.0. Now, you want to make sure that this zigzag is less than a quarter of an inch wide. And the reason why is because we're going to use a seam allowance of one quarter of an inch when we put in the zipper and you don't want to see that zigzag stitch. And you want to sew right up to the edge here. At the beginning of the video, I showed you a few different uses for the case. Everything fit in fine except for my Tombow markers. So if you have something else that you would like to use the case for, what I suggest is that you measure the item that's going to go in there. These Tombow markers are about seven and a half inches long. So instead of making my square, my finished square, eight inches long, I would make my finished square about nine inches long but I would keep the width of the square the same. So for a set of Tombow markers, I would make the case eight inches wide by nine inches long. Now, since you may be making your case a different size than mine, I wanna show you how to decide how long of a zipper that you'll need. This is a YKK zipper, as I said before, and its finished length is 48 inches. All you're simply going to do is take that zipper and lay it around the perimeter. 
and you want it to be a little bit longer than the actual case. So you want it to go all the way around the perimeter with a little bit of overhang on each side. Then you're going to take this and measure how long this is and that's how long you want to start with your zipper. For me it was about 25 inches. So here's the piece that I cut out for this pouch and I had simply laid the zipper around the perimeter just like this with a little bit of overhang on each end and that turned out to be 25 inches. Now since we're going to put a zipper tab at the end of this we have to figure out the exact measurement that we're going to need for our zipper. To do that I have to make a few marks on both the zipper and the panel here. First off I want the zipper tab to stop one half inch before the bottom of the pouch. So I'm just going to take my ruler and I'm going to mark a line one half inch up from that bottom straight edge with my chalk wheel. So this is where I want the zipper to stop on this line right here. Then the next thing I want to do is mark the center of this panel. So again I'm going to take my chalk wheel and measure four inches in from the edge and that will be the center point of my panel. So I'll just mark that with the chalk marker. And then the last mark I want to make is to take the zipper tape, fold it in half, and mark the center of the tape. And I've already done that right here with my friction pen. So I have a blue mark right here. Then I'm going to take the zipper and I want to place it face down onto my panel. So the right side of the zipper, that's the side that's going to have the zipper teeth, is going to be face down or right sides together with this panel. And I'm going to start clipping this all the way around. Now, this is only temporary just to get our measurement. But if you're making more than one pouch, you only need to do this one time. So I'm basting it in here with some Wonder Clips as if I was actually going to be sewing it. When you go around the curves, you just want to roll everything around your finger. That will help ease in the zipper. Now some people like to clip into their zipper tape to help it to fit better. I don't like to do that because the zipper tape will fray very easily. If you do feel that you need to clip in a little bit to help you around those curves, make sure that you use fray check on those um, clip marks that you've cut into the zipper tape to prevent the zipper tape from fraying. So you're going to continue clipping until you get down to the chalk mark right here at the bottom. So here's the chalk mark that's one half inch up from the bottom. Then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to clip the zipper into place. It doesn't really take that long. And as I said, if you're making more than one pouch, you only need to do this one time. Make sure that the edge of the zipper tape is even with the edge of the case. Now that the zipper is clipped into place, we want to mark lines on the zipper at that half inch mark. So here's the half inch chalk line. I can use a ruler to make sure that I get my marks nice and straight. And then I just want to make a mark on the zipper right where that chalk line is. So we want to cut the excess zipper tape off at this blue mark and at this blue mark. And that will give us the proper length of the zipper. Now we can go ahead and remove that zipper from the case. And then we're ready to add on our zipper pull. To put on our zipper pull, you want to bring the two ends of the zipper together. I have the zipper teeth facing up, and you want to make sure that the zipper tape itself is not twisted in any way. Then you're going to take your zipper pull. 
Now at the top of the zipper pull, there are two channels, one on the left and one on the right. And on the bottom of the zipper pull, there's just one channel there. We're going to work on the side with the two channels. So you're going to take your zipper tape and put one end of the zipper tape into the left channel at a 45 degree angle. Then you'll take the other end of the zipper tape, put it into the right channel at a 45 degree angle. And I'm not going in very deep. You can see how far in I am right now. You're just going to give it a push. And when you give the bottom of the zipper pull a push, you're going to feel or hear it click into place. And then you can just pull it right on. Now, this really is not difficult to do. It was a challenge for me when I first started adding on my own zipper pulls, but after maybe five or ten minutes of practice, I was able to get it perfect every single time, and you will be able to do that too. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the differences in the actual zipper. As I said, this is a YKK 4.5 zipper. It's also known as a handbag zipper. You can see that the teeth on it are not very wide. I have another zipper here. This is a number five zipper. Now the width of the tape is the same on both. They're both one and a quarter inches wide. But you can see on this one, the zipper teeth are much wider. They're also much heavier. And as I said before, I prefer the YKK zipper over a zipper like this because this bends around the curves much easier. You can see as I'm trying to curve this around that it's not very flexible. You can use these, and I have used these in this project, but it's much easier with the YKK zipper. Now you'll take the piece that you cut for your zipper tab, and you want to put the right side of the zipper against the right side of that tab, and match up the edges there. I'll put in a couple of clips, and we want to sew this on with a half inch seam allowance with a stitch length of about 2.4, 2.5. I did mark one half inch away from the edge of that zipper tab for my sewing line. So I'm just going to go over the sewing machine and sew across that line right now. And I'm going to do that off camera. Now that I finished sewing on my zipper tab, I can remove my clips. I want to take this end of the tab and pull it up. Then I'm going to bring it over to the back, just like this. And now I want to make a little fold in the end of the tab and I want that fold to cover the line of stitching. So about like that. You just don't want to see the stitching line. And then I'm going to put a couple more clips in just to hold everything in place. And I'm going to go over to the sewing machine once again and from the top side I want to stitch in about an eighth of an inch away from that seam line. You just want to make sure that you're catching the fold on the back side. And I'm going to go do that off camera. I just finished sewing on the zipper tab. If at any time you're worried about your machine sewing over the zipper teeth, what you can do is sew right up to the zipper teeth, stop, and then you would turn your hand wheel and your sewing machine towards you to walk the needle over the zipper teeth. You definitely never want to sew over metal zipper teeth. Now we're ready to clip our zipper onto the case so that we can sew it on. You want to start by opening up the zipper. I will use this eighth inch tape just to demonstrate. I, I usually just use the clips, but we'll use this so that you can see how to do it. You just want to get that eighth inch tape all the way up to the edge. I don't recommend using one quarter inch tape because our seam allowance is going to be one quarter of an inch. And you just want to make sure that that tape stays out of that seam allowance. So just put this on all the way around the zipper. It doesn't need to go onto the zipper tab part. I have the adhesive tape on the zipper now and then you just want to pull off the paper that's on top of that tape and I already had gotten mine started. So now you want to take the zipper and once again the right side of the zipper will be facing the right side of the case and you're going to match up those center marks there. And then you can just press it down because you have the adhesive. Now, I still like to put in clips because that's just how I do it. You don't have to if you don't want to, if you've got the tape on there. 
and then we're going to clip it in place, making sure that the edge of the zipper tape is even with the edge of the case. Again, you want to round those corners around your finger to help ease that zipper into place. I have one side of the zipper secured into place and the bottom of that zipper tab is even with that half inch chalk mark. Now you want to go ahead and clip the other side of the zipper in the same way. Now as you're clipping in, these sides are going to start to come together this way because of the zipper tab being in there and that's okay. And now the zipper is completely clipped into place. You really just want to make sure that your zipper tab at the bottom is ending up in the same spot on both sides and that these bottom edges are even with each other. Now we can go ahead over to the sewing machine and sew this into place. I'm ready to sew the zipper into place. I'm using a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm sewing one quarter of an inch away from the edge of the zipper tape. You do want to use a zipper foot to sew the zipper into place. You also want to back stitch at both ends. The tape is holding this in place very nicely, but I have my little fake stiletto here, just in case I need it. and then back stitch again at this end. Now let's just turn this right side out for a minute because we just want to make sure that our zipper is closing properly. And it seems to be closing just fine. And our edges here are all nice and even with each other. So that's good. Now we can go ahead and turn this with the wrong side out again and we're going to clip on the interior to the opposite side of the zipper. Now I'm ready to clip my interior into place. I put the adhesive tape onto the zipper tape again and I'm just going to pull off that paper and I've marked the center of my interior. I want the right side of the interior to face now the wrong side of the zipper, so the opposite side of the zipper. And I'm going to match up that center mark again. And then I'm just going to go ahead and clip all the way around. Just make sure that all of those edges are even. This tape really does do a good job. I'm just lining up the bottom right here. 
You want those bottom edges to be even. And then you'll go ahead and clip in the opposite side the same way. The interior is completely clipped into place. The middle of the interior is going to be raised up like this. That's because of the zipper tab being there, but that's okay. You just want to make sure that you don't catch this underneath your sewing needle as you're sewing around. Now we can go stitch it in place. Now I'm going to sew from the exterior side and I just want to follow along that previous line of stitching. You want to also make sure that the interior is completely out of the way as you sew around. And you do want to back stitch at both ends. This time we're starting right at the bottom edge of the pouch. We're not starting from where the zipper tab is. And then just go ahead and slowly sew all the way around. Always checking to make sure that the interior is out of the way following that line of stitching. As you go around the curve, you also want to feel under here to make sure that that zipper is laying flat. And you will be able to feel it. Now as I get towards the bottom, I want to make sure that my interior is out of the way. And again, we're sewing all the way to the bottom and then back stitch at the end. After you have the interior sewn into place, this is exactly the way it's going to look. The interior will be pulled to one side and the exterior will be pulled to the other side. And this is how it looks from the top. You can see the zipper tab right here. And this is actually the perfect position for closing up the pouch. So what we want to do is have that zipper tab pushing up towards the lining there. Just like that. And then we're going to bring the two side edges of the exterior together and clip those into place. You're going to clip the exterior bottom edges together. And then we're going to clip the interior edges together. But we're not going to sew the interior edges completely closed because we're going to leave an opening here for turning. What we're going to do is sew completely across here with a one quarter of an inch seam. And you want to stop somewhere around here. And then this bit right here between my fingers will be left open for turning the pouch. And then you can either sew this opening closed by hand, which is what I prefer, or you can sew it closed by machine. But what this is going to do is give you a completely clean interior with no raw edges and no need for any binding. So let's go ahead and sew this closed. I'm sewing everything closed now with a 1 quarter inch seam and a stitch length of 3.0. You do want a back stitch.
Now your zipper tab is going to be right here, but with the zipper foot on you should be able to glide right past it because it's set in one half of an inch from the edge of the pouch. And then I'm going to stop right about where that mark is and I want to pivot. And then I'm going to sew down this way. This actually helps you to turn and have a nice finished corner there when you sew everything closed by hand. Now I do like to make a little bit of a clip right here in this corner, just a little V-clip. Make sure that you do not cut into that stitching there. And then you can go ahead, reach inside your opening and start turning the pouch or the case right side up. Just go slowly. It will go through very easily. You just have to be a little bit patient with it. Just keep pushing and pulling. Of course you don't want to pull too, too hard because you don't want to rip any of your stitches. And you can see that really was not too bad at all. And you just want to go in with your point turner and get into that little corner right there gently. Push out that corner to give you a nice point. And then for your zipper tab here, you just want to get underneath it and push up. And then you can take your point turner and push the edge of the case out a little bit just to give you a nice square seam. And then of course the lining will get pushed down into the case. Just want to smooth it down in there very nicely. Make sure that you caught all of the um, fabric in the seam. You don't want to make sure that you don't have any fabric that didn't catch. Then you'll go ahead and you want to sew this opening closed. Now again you can either do it by machine or you can hand stitch it closed. I'm going to stitch mine closed by hand just like this. And then the last thing that I like to do is top stitch around the top edge. So what I'll do is go over to my iron. I want to give everything a nice pressing. I want to make sure that my lining is sitting in there all nice and smooth. And then I'll press everything and I'll show you how I do my top stitching. It is possible to top stitch around your case, but it's a little bit tricky, so I want to demonstrate how to do it here on the mat first. First of all, you can only stitch from the end of the zipper tab on this side to the end of the zipper tab on this side. First you're going to open up your case and you want to turn it so the exterior side is out. And then at the machine the case is going to be oriented in this position right here. You want to pull the zipper pull out of the way and you're going to use your zipper foot on the machine. You'll start about here with your zipper foot. And then you're going to sew as close to the zipper tab as you can possibly get. And then once you're about as far as you can get, then you're going to back stitch. And then when you're far enough away so that you can pivot, you're going to pivot with the needle down so that the foot is now facing in this direction right here. And then you're going to sew all the way around. And then when you get to the other side, you'll again pull everything out of the way. Your foot will be about here and then you're going to sew as close to the zipper tab as you can possibly get and then you're going to back stitch. And that's how you do the top stitching around the top of the case. So let's go try it at the machine. I'm going to be stitching with a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm going to start 
by sewing towards the zipper tab and I want to get as close to it as I can possibly get. Then I'm going to sew backwards and once the back of that foot can clear the zipper pull and the zipper tab I'm going to pivot everything around this way and now I can sew or top stitch all the way around the case. And now once again, as I get towards that zipper pull and the zipper tab, I'm going to sew as close to the zipper tab as I possibly can. And then I'll back stitch. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video and I do hope that you're going to give the case a try. I'd love to have you over at my Facebook page where you can post pictures and let us know how you're using the pouch. I want to thank everybody who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you as one. So please like and subscribe.